to start the show. Uh, and speaking of someone who could buy me more replacement of whatever was in that package that I lost, <laughs> uh, Houston Texans wide receiver, Nico Collins, got yeah. paid uh, big time. And this is something that I, mm-hmm. I didn't really see coming before the season, but I think after watching how last year played out, it, it makes sense. Uh, he was rewarded with a three-year, $72 million contract, which is, I, I, I guess, like the new norm for bona fide wide receiver ones, right? You're going to be making in that close to $25 million uh, per year range. Got, I think, is over $50 million guaranteed. And now we still have more dominance to fall in the wide receiver market. Justin Jefferson still doesn't have a new deal. CeeDee Lamb still doesn't have a new deal. T. Higgins is still trying to figure his way out of Cincinnati or figure out what's next for him. What are your thoughts on the Nico Collins contract and I guess the, the larger implications on on what's next? Yeah, I love it. And I think by the end of it, it's probably going to be a bargain when you consider how good CJ Stroud is, how good their connection is. Um, it avoids an apocalypse if Stefan Diggs leaves next year, which with with his new contract status, who knows? Um it was I saw some people today say, well, he's a he's a one year wonder or whatever. Two things about that. Number one is the stats last year were phenomenal. Um, fifth in yards per reception, yards per target in the top five, uh, EPA per target. I think he was second in the NFL. Great against, I saw a 33rd team kind of breakdown where he was elite against man coverage and zone coverage. I think only Tyreek Hill was better um, when you when you juxtapose both, both of those, when you blend those two together. Um, and I think that the other part, and this is the 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 major part, is that the first two years he was playing against or playing with at quarterback a bunch of insurance adjusters and bartenders. Um, I mean, this was I actually I had forgotten who threw the most passes for the 2022 Texans. So there were three players who played in at least who started at least two games. Do you know who they were? Uh I'm gonna guess Davis Mills. Um yep, yep, he was number one. Was Kyle Allen one of them? He was, yes. And Brian Hoyer. That's just my Mm-mm. Texans guess. No. I don't remember the third one. No. Uh, Jeff Driscoll. Oh, wow. He's not even playing quarterback anymore, is he? I, I don't think I couldn't so. tell you where what he's doing. <laughs> so uh Nico Collins getting 481 yards in that in that offense. Um I'm not sure you can draw many conclusions from that. So I don't know. I don't I, I don't I think Justin Jefferson and even T. Higgins. And Jamar Chase, obviously, I think they have higher value than than Nico Collins would. I think this is a sign, A, of just a smart kind of year-by-year build the Texans have, getting their business done early, understanding what they have, where they are right now, and not leaving until last second, which some teams do. Like, I I always think that – I do think planning is a little bit overrated in sports. I think teams kind of retcon their plans all the time. They're like, oh, we did this because of this. It's like they're really just taking it year-by-year. But I think they understand – the next couple of years in Houston can be really special. And I I really thought, Charles, they were making a mistake when they traded that pick to get Will Anderson, for that pick to get Will Anderson. And I was like, why are they accelerating the timeline? They made me look like a clown, <laughs> a straight-up clown. And now I, I see the vision. And and I think that, and, I, and I've said this a million times, but like, the thing about genuine, real-deal franchise-changing quarterbacks is they don't wait. And we sit around, and like, I was actually, I almost tweeted this the other day, but I didn't, but like, a power ranking of the angriest people on Twitter right up there is fan base of a young quarterback oh my God. that hasn't proven anything going into year two or year three with the jury's still out, but they've shown nothing. And very often the sad reality is they're not going to pop because if normally, if you don't come into this league with the proof of concept, you don't gain it in year three. Only Josh Allen and Troy Aikman have gone have gotten good from year two to year three. Anyway, this is a long way of saying like CJ Stroud proving this means A, he's going to be here for 10 years, but it also shows you what a genuine real deal franchise changing quarterback looks like. Because we sit around and we look at these quarterbacks and say, oh, if he gets number one receiver, if he gets a running back, if he improves this left tackle, yes, there are circumstances that change everything. But for me, the most important thing is like, that's what it looks like. And when you have that, you do everything you can to build a, build around him. Yeah. And it, it, it's a, it's kind of exciting um, mm-hmm. because I remember like going into last year, I was like, oh, you know, this... This Texans thing could work out year one for CJ. Like, you know, they got some pieces, but I didn't know Nico Collins was as good. I didn't know Tank Dell was no as, idea. as good as he was. Um, but I would also say that finding a quarterback as good as CJ Stroud helps them be, you know, the best of their abilities. And what I also like about this contract is 
um, there's been some discussion, especially right like right after the Dix trade was made, like who's the wide receiver one, who's two, who's three, when's Take Dell gets back. No, there's no questions who wide receiver one is now. I think it's Nico, and the rest of the pieces are going to fall as they may, and they've they've done a good job of setting this 